Right guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Frontier today have opened up to feedback on development for Beyond. Beyond being the series of updates that's coming in 2018 to Elite Dangerous. Now they've opened up a brand new section of their forums whereby players can directly interact with developers and discuss proposed changes. Now the great thing about all of this is that the feedback is occurring early enough in the development process that the feedback can be taken into account and therefore be used to help direct the game towards the best approach. So the way this is working currently is that any new topic will come with four new sticky threads. The first will discuss the topic at hand. The second and third and fourth will respectively be for suggestions of support, issues as well as requests for further detail. So this should hopefully expand into a number of different subjects that will uh, cover the entire series of Beyond updates. But of course Frontier won't be discussing every single minute detail with players, but just the things that they feel they need feedback on. They've also been very clear to express the following. This is not for planning design by committee. They say that ultimately the final judgment call will of course be Frontiers. It's not to reveal their roadmap. Anything discussed within these forums should really not be viewed as something written in stone. And it's also not an area for debate with other players. Essentially then, this area is purely for feedback on the game's development. The first subject up for discussion then is perhaps one of the most controversial subjects in Elite outside of open play versus solo. And this is Crime and Punishment. What I'm going to do then is read through the Frontier's post on the subject and discuss any points along the way and then have some further talk perhaps at the end of reading this out. Now this was posted by Sandro Samarco, who you probably know by now is a lead designer for Elite Dangerous. So this is what he has to say. We're considering a significant change to how crime and punishment works and we want your feedback. First, full disclosure time, we like the concept of how crime works in Elite Dangerous. It's a thorough system that allows for interest in depth and choice. However, such complexity has not been without its challenges primarily with the idea of consequences for crime, specifically how and when the criminal is brought to justice. First, let's take a very quick recap of the current system at its basic level. Current crime rules. Bounties and fines are assigned to commanders. Fines mature into bounties if not paid within a time limit. Bounties mature into legacy fines if not claimed within a time limit. Bounties and fines are linked to a factional jurisdiction. Bounties and fines can be discovered, causing the commanders to be wanted in associated jurisdictions. Commanders killed once a bounty has been discovered bestow the reward upon the commander that destroyed their ship. Bestowed bounties become legacy fines, payable upon respawning within an associated jurisdiction. So that's simple enough. Uh, basically, it covers it's a quick recap of where things are at the moment, but Sandro goes on to talk about some of the problems with this and what they'd like to change, and he says this, With the amazing benefit of hindsight and feedback, we have two areas that we think could be improved. Appropriate consequences for criminal activity. When a criminal loses their ship and respawns, there is a high chance the penalty is deferred, potentially indefinitely, whether it is a fine or bounty. This is why we introduced the ship rebuy penalty to avoid manipulation of death and respawning in order not to pay appropriate ship costs. Whilst this ostensibly works as a concept, it's a little, little clunky, especially when dealing with infractions against other human commanders. And well, to be perfectly honest, I just butt in there and say that it's a little bit more than just a little clunky. Many people would perhaps argue that it doesn't even really work that well. But anyway, I think they're well aware of that. It goes on to say a more legible crime system. An overhaul, a streamlining of how crimes work, reducing the number of stages that crimes pass through, making the system more legible as well as more robust. Crime and Elite Dangerous was always meant to be complex, but we want to avoid it being too complicated. A little while back, we saw a relatively innocuous post in the forums. It suggested that crimes should be applied to vessels rather than commanders. The more we thought about this idea, the better it seemed to get, which has led us to the following suggestion. We've worked through it reasonably thoroughly and really like the result. We want to put out, for, but we want to put it out for examination to you folk to see what you make of it. 
So basically, we've got an idea of where things stand at the moment and where the false frontier actually is uh, perceived with that, and uh, a rough idea of what they'd like to change. But he then goes on to some more specifics and says, The first part of the overall plan is the basic concept of how bounties and fines are applied. So these are the new rules for bounties and fines. And again, remember, these are just propositions. These are not uh, set in stone at the moment. This is why Frontier have brought them to the forums so they can be discussed. They are actively seeking feedback on this. And I'll put all the links below so you can go and join in with the conversations there. And we'll, we'll discuss a few ideas on this in just a moment and some of the potential uh, problems with it. But these are basically the new rules for bounties and fines. Bounties and fines are applied to ships, making the ship hot. Bounties and fines never expire or mature. Hot ships have restricted services at starports. Hot ships have limitations to ship transfer, module transfer and sale. Fines can be paid off at security office. Bounties can be cleared at interstellar factors at an exorbitant markup. So that then is the first part of proposed changes. Before we continue on further into the post, let's just discuss some of these first. I think people are going to be quite surprised and some probably very shocked to see that Frontier plan on removing bounties and penalties from the player and instead move them to the ship. Now all in all, it's not a completely terrible idea. After all, it does prevent players going out in their souped up ship and thinking they can do this consequence free if they're going to start harassing people or if they're going to start griefing or causing all sorts of trouble over and over again then their ship is going to basically face consequences for doing this and it's essentially going to get to the point where they won't be able to use the ship or will it one thing that's not clear is whether or not the restrictions at service and starports as well as limitations to ship transfer modules and sales are linked to fines that can be paid off at security offices and the bounties that can be cleared at the interstellar factors so in short, if you do have restrictions on your, on your ship, will you then be able to pay the necessary fees to get all those penalties removed? Now, if that is to be the case, then it might not be much of a, a restriction on players because there are many players out there with some extremely deep pockets, dozens of billions of credits in their wallets that they can spend on whatever they feel necessary. If anything, the previous years in Elite Dangerous have shown that credits are not a deterrent to players doing whatever actions they want to do. So basically, in my opinion, the idea here would be that perhaps Frontier should separate fines from the restrictions on the ships. Fines, of course, can be paid off. Restrictions should have to be worked off. After all, everything else in the game requires work, whether it's ranking up, whether it's increasing reputation with a faction, or whether it's simply unlocking engineers, maybe a little progress bar like that could perhaps be applied to the commander themselves whilst the other restrictions are placed on the ship, and the commander would then have to work that off. Don't get me wrong, I think the idea of placing limits and restrictions on the ship itself is a very good one, but also feel that it ultimately comes down to credits again, and like I say, credits are not a deterrent. At the moment within the game, it's very easy to legitimately go out there and earn anywhere in the region of 50 to 200 million credits an hour. Here is a few more clarifications from Sandro on some of these issues. What do they mean by limited services? Well, limited services basically means that players would still be able to complete active missions. He does say active missions there, so that would suggest not be able to pick up new missions. They'd be able to visit the black market, interstellar factors, and the security office. So essentially this would make a station completely redundant to a player and it doesn't really go on to say whether or not it would also include refueling and rearming and repairing but it seems likely that yes it would be completely locked down. There's also a question on what happens with modules. After all a player could just sell a hot ship, move all the modules into a new ship and then carry on again. But apparently the idea, their current thoughts, would that be all modules would also be marked as hot and that moving them into a new ship could then mark that new ship as hot. And whilst both modules and ships could be sold, it's likely they would be sold at an extremely reduced cost. Now again, these are extremely severe repercussions to any criminal out there, but the problem again comes with the fact that these can just be paid off with a simple credit fine. Of course, it does depend on how much that, that uh, fee actually is, how high the bounty is. Will it just be a few million credits? Will it be a few hundred million? Could it be a few billion? Either way, 
is not much of a deterrent to many people out there. And it would seem a shame to see Frontier do all this uh, reworking on the crime and punishment system only for players to actively be able to very easily get around it by paying a minimal fee or what they may see as a minimal fee. And again, I'll repeat, don't forget there's many people out there with billions upon billions of credits and who can very easily earn billions more. Now I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other points I could raise here, but I'm very conscious of keeping this video relatively short. I don't want it to go on too long and it's already getting quite long as it is. But if you do have some points you'd love to raise, then do leave them in the comment section below. And I'm sure Frontier would love to hear from you. Do head on over to the respective forum threads and leave your thoughts there. Now let's move on to the second part of the overhaul. This is where Sandro goes on to say the following. The second part of the overhaul deals with another big philosophical change. Currently, when your ship is destroyed, you always go back to the last starport you docked at. The change we are looking at here is pretty big. New rules for respawning. You respawn at a location dependent on the circumstances of your ship's destruction in a hierarchy. If you were detected as wanted or hostile, you respawn at the nearest appropriate detention facility. If you were not hostile or not detected as wanted, you respawn at the nearest non-hostile starport in the system. And if there are no suitable starports in the system, then you respawn where you were last dogged. So yep, this is a pretty significant change to where things stand at the moment, and this would affect all players, whether they're criminals or not. And he goes on with a few more details. First, a word on detention facilities. These would likely be mega ships, hand placed in few in number. They would be aligned with one of the superpowers, with one set being effectively a private correctional facility used by all independent factions. Respawning at such a location would ensure that any legal costs would have to be paid, with no way to avoid them. Hopefully you can see how this structure makes avoiding paying your dues much more difficult to do. When you factor in a pumped up authority response, internally we call them ATR, advanced tactical responders, and oh my they are serious guys, we think the system is more robust whilst retaining the principles of the current crime system. However, there's no denying this is a big change. Fundamentally, your ship accumulates crimes, not you as the commander. When your ship is boiled with detected crimes, you are forced to respawn at a location where you will have to pay the legal costs. You will have limited access to the services in jurisdictions where your ship is wanted. It's worth adding a little bit more detail at this point. The proposed system is both potentially harsher and softer. It's harder to avoid paying for crimes in a hot ship, but easier to avoid consequences if you're prepared to shelve the wanted ship. In addition, we change the rules a little when it comes to issued bounties, probably by increasing the damage that it takes to suffer one and by adding a lower fine-based penalty for smaller amounts of friendly fire. So that's where Frontier are at with their current thinking on this situation. And just a quick comment and a quick clarification talking about friendly fire there. This, these changes will also affect NPCs. So if you go out committing crimes against NPCs, then you will also face the same penalties as if you attack players. Now there's one very clear underlying philosophy here that seems to be the foundational issue to how Frontiers seem crime, uh, few crime and punishment. And that's the idea that no matter how harsh your crime, and no matter how many times you're a repeat offender, your crimes can also always be wiped clean with a simple credit payment. And personally, I think that no matter how much the Frontier rework crime and punishment, if it's always solvable by credit payments, then they're always going to come back to the same problem. They're not really solving anything ultimately, because, well, anyone can always pay the fines. And ultimately, if you can't afford to pay the fines, then you're probably not going to commit the crimes in the first place. But let's face it, as I've said many times, billionaires are really not phased by this. Yet, this seems really to be the foundational issue with the idea behind the, uh, the incarceration ships, the mega ships, whereby you won't be able to leave without paying your dues. Whether or not Frontier are willing to take the feedback into consideration and completely move away from this concept is very much open to question. After all, the idea, for example, of working off your crimes very much flies in convention of everything that Elite has stood for so far. But ultimately, it may be the only way of seriously confronting this issue and coming up with some type of working solution. Now, as I said earlier, I haven't discussed every idea I've had regarding this particular subject, but it's a subject I'd like to come back to and revisit in a future video where we can discuss things in depth when we've got some more developments on 
at the feedback for this. But there is right now a subject I really would like to discuss, and it's something Frontier haven't mentioned at all. Now, they talk about crime and punishment, of course, crime and punishment. They're very much focusing on the punishment side of things and not really focusing on the crime side of things. Of course, it's very easy to commit a crime within Elite Dangerous. You can just go out there and shoot a few players or shoot a few NPCs. But should perhaps more depth be added to the criminal elements of the gameplay? Personally, I don't believe that all PvPers and all player killers are griefers. Far from it, in fact. And just perhaps criminal-based gameplay could be reworked into having greater depth. Piracy is a great example of this. There's very little in the way of rewards for pirates at the moment. This is something that could do with some significant work and would hook players into black markets which could then have greater depth where you could sell all your ill-gotten gains. Bases not unlike this one here on the screen right now would probably be quite nice for players who have a rather negative reputation. At the end of the day, Frontier have clearly said that they like the idea of crime within Elite Dangerous. If Frontier are going to insist on having crime within this world, and I think it's got a valid place in the game, it's been there pretty much right from the start, then really it needs to have a greater depth of gameplay associated with it. If you want to develop punishments that try and encourage players to play the game in a way that's a little bit more friendly perhaps, then you also need to develop the other side of it, a more rewarding gameplay for such players. Please don't think that I'm giving a green light to seal clubbers and other types of players who are participate in actions like that. Working off their crimes and even having their assets impounded could have worked very well for that type of playstyle. But for players who enjoy piracy and for players who enjoy player-based conflict, then really I'd like to see some additional options on the table for the crime side of this, in addition to the establishment of the proposed rules for punishment. So, all in all, that's where things stand at the moment, and I've really got to admit that I'm very pleased to see Frontier opening up and discussing these sorts of subjects, as well as saying they're willing to accept feedback and incorporate that into proposed changes. I do hope that you'll leave your feedback in the comments section below, and more importantly, head on over to the Frontier Forum and leave your feedback there. And do remember, uh, Frontier have posted a golden rule there, and that's there's no room for discussion of other players' opinions, in the sticky threads. They say basically just view that as discussing the subject directly with the developers. I look forward to returning to this subject when there's some more information on it. For now, that brings us to the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.